So here we are. Uh, this is uh, mm, this is our starting point for today. Just a recap of what we are doing. Um, we were talking about modeling, design modeling for web application, and we also mentioned that uh, um, we work on this uh, uh, picture as uh, to identify the design space. The design space for web application is organized through a number of dimensions content, navigation, interaction, operation, and presentation. Uh, our focus is on the large, in the large. So we work, we, we focus on the um, high level properties, uh, forgetting, abstracting from any implementation detail, and for abstracting from the detailed properties. We want to describe general property of the content, the navigation interaction, of presentation, we totally omit uh, dealing with operations. And we have uh, different models to, to address different So the different sub-models, sorry, let me go up. The different sub-models are CIDM, LIDM, and PIDM. Yesterday, we almost completed the description of what CIDM is. It has to do exclusively with um, content. LIDM is a sort in between, between content navigation. PIDM focuses on navigation and presentation, again, in the large. So content to design has to do to designing what can be said, because remember, we have this metaphor that uh, the interact, the, 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 mm, an application is a sort of agent that can speak, uh, can create a di dialogue uh, with the user so that every time the user open a page is somehow listening to what the system is going to say to him or her. When the user clicks a link, uh, is asking a question. That is the general metaphor. Um, so our goal is to organize conversation and to design, uh, to design what can be said, what the, what the dialogue is about, how the different subjects or conversation are internally organized, how they're mutually related and how they are grouped. So the basic primitives, the basic primitives are topic, kind of topic, also referred to multiple topic or type of topic, relevant relationship, also referred to semantic relationship, group of topic, nested group, multiple group. The idea is that topic and kind of topic, they describe the universe of discourse. So what will we speak about? Uh, semantic relation, um, relevant relation, say what, how these subjects are connected so that I can switch from one subject to another one. Group of topic is how are they organized? How can, can, can we group the different topics into sets, meaningful sets, to, to, to start with uh, um, in our conversation so that we can then focus on one element of the group or the other one. So the concept is group is fundamental and it's probably one of the main differences with in, 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 the, in the original definition of the model with respect, for example, to the entity relationship model, in which you simply have entities and relationship. Um, groups in the entity relationship model are created by query, so you can only create groups um, by uh, selecting and filtering a um, piece of data that have some specific uh, uh, properties on their attributes. Um, in IDM, we want to give uh, um, to groups the role of first order citizens, so that at the design stage, we define with the, what the groups are and not all group that we want to have can be uh, created by queries or filtering mechanism. Uh, uh, we also have seen the notation, so the notation for uh, another distinction, sorry, between um, with respect to um, with respect to the entity relationship model, beside the concept of group, is the concept of the distinction between topic and kind of topic. In the entity relationship model, you only have types. You have enti entities for person, entities for teacher, entity for student, entity for course, entity for activity. You don't have uh, singletons. The topics are this, the content, 
that are available in the application uh, as individuals. So individuals topics that are that do not have other similar contents. So that in any application, in most application, for example, the owner of the application, the institution that uh, uh, about which the application is, is a single topic. Um, for example, in the website of, of Polytechnic Milano, the single topic is uh, our university, while the kinds of topic are courses, teachers, activities, uh, uh, campuses, and so on and so forth. Um, being a single topic uh, is not is a property which is local to the application, which means uh, that uh, um, uh, if you move from that application to a broader situation, that topic might, might become a kind of topic. And the example is the following. If you want to create a, uh, if you have the individual websites of each um, university, and then you want to create a super website of all universities in Lombardy, uh, a sort of portal, in that case, uh, the, the topic university becomes a kind of topic because you have many universities, many instances of this uh, um, uh, of this subject. Um, and that is, these are the, the key concepts uh, that we have uh, um, discussed so far. I would like to see if there is any question on these general concepts. Otherwise, I continue. OK, one question is about the definition of primitives. Uh, uh, which is a sort of broad, uh, a broad question. Primitive is um, uh, uh, is the okay. Primitive is the basic language of a language. It's a, the the building block. is a is a um, uh, is a term that is used in theory and linguistic to define in the building block, the the key elements of the language. Okay, so I will continue. Um, I was here. OK, so um, we have seen some example. Uh, I would like to stress again the notion of group uh, in which you have a, and the grouping criteria. So you where, where you see clearly that is not like uh, making just making a query. Um, in some cases, uh, you can uh, imagine to create a group automatically, such as in this application example, uh, which is uh, an exhibition about uh, uh, Edward Munch prints. Uh, you can create a group of all prints uh, that are created using dry point technique. Uh, OK, that is an objective criteria. You may uh, calculate in principle it automatically. But the museum curator favorite prints is a subjective thing. You have to select one by one. That okay? Someone of you is um, has not muted the mic. Okay. Um, also, uh, other classes of, of, of groups can be created automatically, such as those one uh, that focus on a specific user profile. All courses for bachelor students. In this case, it's not uh, the pro you can in principle calculate this group by using the join. Uh, in terms of database between courses and uh, or or simply the attribute, who is uh, this uh, the attributes uh, um, uh, um, associated program for the course? But in this case, it, the, the criteria is I want to create a group because I'm, I'm focusing on specific user profile, or you can create a group because you focus on a specific uh, activity, a specific goal of the user. So I want to have food for a romantic dinner. You have you put together all the products uh, that mm, allow you to make a romantic dinner or for promotion purposes. So you can put together things because you want to do a marketing action or to want to promote something. The other important concept is those of nested group. Very often you have groups that not simply group topics, but group other group, like in this case. So when you say my group is all prints and then I have my the group of Tom 10 masterpieces, then it's some that you have to group them into a higher level group. So basically groups are container, container or of structures, and this structure can be topics, kind of top, uh, topics, uh, single topics, 
topics that have many instances, to topics that belong to a kind or other groups. Okay, so nothing prevents you to put, uh, and group do not need to be heterogeneous, um, homogeneous. You can put things together um, of different kind of topic, of, of topics of different kind, and you can also put together uh, uh, single topics with the topics that have multiple instances. So it's a mix up of, of anything, of generic structure that is made according to some subjective objective criteria or focusing on specific user profiles or needs. Um, these are, when we talk about multiple groups, uh, uh, so you have to remember that having a design model is a way to describe something very complex and very large with few primitive, with few notations. And that is also the, the very idea of UML in which you have all these diagrams that can describe huge systems in, in few picture and few diagram. So this is the small picture that allow you to describe that in your application, there are a lot of groups of prints. Each one is grouped, grouped because of its theme. So you have the group of prints about love, about another group about death, another group about youth, another group about nature. So it's, instead of writing one after the other, uh, you say, okay, I have many groups. Of, the notation means I have many groups of prints. Each group has a specific theme. Very simple, very compact, uh, two boxes and an arrow to describe many, many, many things. Clearly, in this case, it's a sort of parametric because what characterizes each group is that all prints in the same group have the same value for this parameter. And when again, and, and typically when you have a, a multiple group, so something that indeed is one notation for many things, um, uh, again, uh, you, you are creating some multiple stuff, so you, are, you will group them um, through a higher level group, for example, in this case, themes for print. So you have, to, you have many instances of these groups and you say, okay, let's group them in some way, and you have a single group uh, where you, which is uh, all teams uh, for which uh, I have uh, a group of prints. Um, and you can create also things that are, um, so, so that is the same case expanded. So I said books, uh, uh, you have uh, books of a given gen gender, X. Uh, for example, X can be value thriller um, or X can be value novel. X contains uh, a book one, which is a thriller, a book two, which is a thriller. Um, this one um, contains uh, two novels. Okay, you put, uh, you create a nested group uh, genders that take them together. So this is multiple. You see, this is an instance of book by gender. This is an instance of book by gender. This is another instance of book by genders, And you group them uh, through a higher level group called gender, gender, generous. Um, one another concept that is uh, inspired again to entity relationship, but is uh, revised, is the concept of cardinality. Cardinality in mathematics means uh, size of a set. It's a very clear concept. How big a set is. So cardinality is uh, a concept associated to anything which is a set. So in our case, associated to multiple topics, so kind of topics, so the types of topic to the relationship and, um, and to groups, I'm saying not just multiple, sorry, that is a mistake. So please remove it in the slides as well. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, and the idea is the following. I want to know how many topics of this kind I have. How many prints? Um, how uh, this relationship connect? Uh, how many elements to these elements? When I, I say, okay, a relation between a student, uh, a teacher, and the student in a course. Uh, of course, for me, it's important to know that you are more than 140. Okay, but it's important, not just in principle. It's important because I need to plan. Uh, it's an important design specification because I need to plan my um, implementation, so I need to know how much data uh, and how much content I need to deal with, and also I need to, uh, to, to, to plan the entire editorial process. So 
cardinality is give the weight to, uh, to, to, to your contents. You, you cannot just say, in, consider, for example, your um, the, the application that you have, you have to develop for the project. It's not just that uh, uh, that you say, OK, I, I have activities, I have people, I have services. But it's important to say how many people, how many services, how many activity, so that you plan your work, you organize your authoring process, the, the editing of, and the collection of the content. So this is a, a, an important specification that you have to include in your, in your documentation. But instead of being rigid, I want to have exactly 10 person. I mean, reality is flexible. You will continue to update uh, your application. If it is a reapplication, the application lives along the time with new contents. Our definition of cardinality is that uh, it's the expected number of instances. So I predict that I will have as many things like this. Uh, with a mean, typically with a minimum and a maximum. So if you're sure that uh, you cannot have more than uh, um, 10 people, that exactly 10 people that you would put in the described in your voluntary association web site, you put 10. But if you say in the design stage, it can be minimum five and I expect a maximum of 20, then you have a minimum and a maximum. So right here, the same for the group. For the group, you say, OK, I group, uh, of course, when you say I group the ton, top 10 events, uh, the cardinality is 10. If I group, say, I group uh, the most relevant events uh, for, for this user profile, you can make a range between 10 to 20, between 3 to 4. Um, relevant relationship is the same if you want to if you say okay i want to connect a teacher to the students well let let us know what is the maximum amount of student that i can connect in this application or the maximum amount of uh, courses and if you look at cardinality you will see in your web in, during your design it's, it's really important because then there are further design steps uh, in page design that uh, are affected by decision, by the specification of cardinality. So keep cardinality in mind and remember it is important for uh, page design, for designing the paging and from planning navigation. Um, that is what I said. So you need to add cardinality to kind of topic, relevant relations, group of topic and multiple groups. Um, uh, okay. Final step about CIDM. Uh, all these are nice concepts. How do I represent them? And you represent them through schemas. So uh, this is an example of CIDM schemas. You see, uh, there are uh, kind of topics, techniques, artistic movement, print, uh, period of life, um, uh, there are single topic, the museum, the specific artist, Munch, Edward Munch, about which uh, the exhibition is, the exhibition itself, uh, events, let, let, we will shortly discuss about events, contacts and credits, and then there are several semantic relationships and several groups. So the typical question that, uh, that when people, uh, a typical Yes, question. Well, when, when there are situations in which the topics is about multiple things, such, such as events, so the, you may wonder why uh, prints or room is a multiple topic and events is modeled as a single topic. So it may, what do you expect that we say here? And then I switch to, to questions. Okay, so there are several questions. Can you give an example of topic with multiple instances? Um, okay, most topics have multiple instances, like uh, in, in this slide here. All this, we have multiple instances. Print, we have many prints. Technique, we have many techniques. A room, we have many, many rooms where prints are exhibited. Exhibited. Period of life, we want to represent different periods of life for Munk. We want to have many artistic movements. Uh, who are related to monks or influenced the monk in a given period of life. You have many artists, 
different from Munch, who are um, um, the main representative of the artistic movement. But we have one exhibition, one museum, one uh, main uh, artist, uh, one topic which is content, one topic which is credits, one topic which is event. And, and the reason, okay, let me see other questions. So uh, mm, I ask you why, in your opinion, the designer decided that events is a single topic, credits is a single topic, context is a single topic, but room is a multiple topic. Um, okay. Oh, well. And, and let me just go through the question. Can you give us an example of topic? Yes, we had a group of topics that contained different copies, kind of uh, would indicate it by, by more than one arrow. Yes, okay. The idea is that uh, when you group together things that are from different kind of topics, such as you want to put together a uh, product and uh, services, you have two arrows, one uh, that points to products and another one, a kind of topic products and another one uh, uh, to kind, different kind of topics, uh, to events. Um, there is, okay, I, I, now you're trying, okay, so let me just answer to another, to this question which is connected, topic with multiple instance equal to kind of topic. Yes, that is a good definition. <clears throat> and you're starting answering, uh, Positively, <laughs> um, okay. They say um, to the question, why do we have um, here events, which is a single topic, while print and room and technical multiple? And the answer is uh, correctly because we imagine that we will have a single pages listing all the events uh, and not multiple pages for each event. Exactly, that is exactly the question, the answer to my question. So it's a strategic decision, decision. no matter if in the world, in, in abstract terms, uh, um, there are many events, we have decided to, to group them, I mean, to, to pack them into a single message that we've gone to the user. Here, you will find all relevant events. Um, Okay, that is another good question. Do relationships, uh, relevant relationships, collect, connect uh, only kind of topic or may also involve topic? Uh, in general, uh, relationship hold for classes of inform classes of, um, of, to of of items of, of, of topics. So teachers, students, student course, course uh, room, and so on. There are situations in which uh, you create uh, um, a relationship between a single topic and multiples. Uh, I mean, in principle, conceptually, they are, there are, they, this, uh, this relationship exists, but uh, the, the designer should make the decision about the following issue. Shall we, do I really want to, to to highlight, to, to provide this relationship to the user. And remember, but by the way, relationship will become navigation uh, opportunity. So I, you have to think that, as I, as I mentioned at the yesterday, relationship are opportunistic design decision, having in mind that they will become navigation opportunities. So it's not modeling the world, it's modeling what is relevant for the user, what, what can, may raise interest in question, and something that the user can then exploit through navigation. So look at museum. In principle, you know, museum is related to everything because museum holds the exhibition, hosts the event, uh, is about, uh, uh, or the exhibition is about Munch. Uh, you will see that, so in principle, if you draw all possible uh, all possible relationship between a single topics and other topics, so the the museum holds uh, all these rooms, Munch has used all these techniques. Uh, you have to make a, a, a decision having in mind that uh, all the again that all the relationship that. Uh, you provide 
become navigation opportunity. If you give too many navigation opportunity to the user, you get into this in an issue similar, similar to information overload. You're giving them too much and, and you have usability problems. We will see when we do page design. So please remember this question when we will discuss page design, because uh, this is related to the definition of landmarks in page design. So we will solve the, the need for the user of having connection, of, having, of, of exploiting connection with single topic by putting single topics as landmarks. And so um, landmarks are, well, you're using landmarks actually in your usability study. Landmarks are links that are placed in uh, all pages of the application. So instead of uh, creating explicit uh, so a relationship between single topic and multiple topics, uh, um, you, you take into account the need for the user to, 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 to have a quick navigation to a single topic by putting a link to single topics um, as landmarks. But again, uh, we will discuss the navigation issue um, next week. OK. Uh, uh, do, OK, the question, do recognition, OK. Uh, that is a similar answer to the previous one. And so we have a credits in one page while we want to have description, detailed description of each room in separate page. Uh, but why it is much related to the art? I think that is, I don't really um, understand this question. Why isn't much, I don't really understand the, the subject of this question, if you could clarify. Okay, ah, Munk. Uh, Munk is, uh, Okay. Okay. Now, no, no, um, okay. Understand the question. Okay. In this, uh, in this, uh, the meaning uh, of this is the following: there is monk, and there are all artists. Uh, several topics, uh, each one being an artist of the same period. So, in this specific exhibition, they wanted to, uh, as in many exhibitions also that they do in uh, say Milan here. Uh, you, you do not just <clears throat> present an artist, but you present an artist and his or her relationship with the period and other artists. So you seldom can do a monography about a specific artist. You typically put also, I mean, some information about the artist uh, in the communities that um, uh, the main artist uh, um, attended. So Munk is the main, the main uh, protagonist of the exhibition. Of course, he is an artist, but the artist, and, and you are, remember, you're not modeling the reality. You're not making <clears throat> a knowledge base for, for an artificial intelligence uh, engine. You are modeling content that the user explore interactively. So Munk is the artist. Is well, Of course, he is an artist, but we are not interested in the fact that Munk is an artist. Munk, for us, is uh, the protagonist of the, the, the main, uh, I mean, the focus of the exhibition. These are other artists that uh, <clears throat> were belonged to some specific artistic movements. And so in order to understand what are the, the artistic movements uh, uh, that Munk uh, say at belonged to, well, Munk is a strange person and he was really changing his, uh, his uh, style during the time and his life and he traversed uh, several artistic movements. Uh, movement. So you cannot ask uh, what are the artistic movements of Munch. You say, okay, what are the artistic movements of Munch for each period of life? So that is the reason why Munch is not connected to artistic movement, is not connected to artists. It's connected through period of life which artist, to the various artistic movement and to the artist. That was the decision, I would say, culturally sophisticated, <laughs> that the museum curator uh, decided to to apply in this specific context. I don't know. I hope that I've solved the question. So it's not redundant. It's it's it's, it's a design choice of, of modeling. Of they wanted to have people going through period, the period of life of Munk, uh, exploring uh, the periods of life, exploring each artistic movement for each period of life, and then the related artists. Not to jump directly, and, the, and they wanted to distinguish Munk from the other artists. 
I think there is no more questions. So I continue. We need to move to. Um, OK, um, I mentioned that <clears throat> at the end, this is a very compact representation of uh, sophisticated design choices uh, and a relatively and, and content rich website. Um, it, it, it tell you many, tells you many things. It, this is a, your preliminary design decision uh, taken with a museum curator, with a designer, with all the design team. They said, okay, it's, let's freeze the, the key content, the key groups, the key relationship. Um, and this is the first part of your documentation, uh, the one piece, uh, the first piece of your documentation uh, when you will do the same process. You have to produce uh, a representation like this. Okay, that is your schema. And then uh, sometimes there are, I, I think it's self evident, but if you want, and that is really optional, <clears throat> you can add a few comments uh, that describe, so textual description um, that complement. Uh, uh, this diagram. So in many cases, uh, these are redundant. Uh, but OK, in, in, in a professional project, uh, you typically have to write a lot of description also to justify the money that you ask. So um, uh, you want to have the comments. My recommendation in your project is uh, to, uh, since it, you have a lot to do <laughs> in your project, my recommendation is to uh, um, to, to include only um, comments that uh, for those design choices that are not obvious. So, um, uh, for example, here, artist, uh, you had looking at the diagram, some of you said, well, why Munk is, there are artists and there is Munk? And so, in this case, this explanation is useful. Artist is the description of an artist, of, of, of artist uh, living during monk time okay so they uh, here in this kind of topic um, the linguistic style is that kind of topic and they describe uh, in a generic way the typical is the typical exemplar of that uh, um, of that uh, uh, kind of topic so relevant really echo rele uh, sometimes relevant relations sometimes some comments uh, are uh, needed for relevant relations because not always uh, the label that you put on relevant relationship. Look at the here, influenced by, belonging to. By the way, you are allowed to use uh, um, to make uh, um, is in some cases uh, when is uh, when it, the the arrow the inverse relationship is evident. You can uh, omit it for readability. So look at here. Um, artists belonging to an artist movement, uh, uh, artistic movement represented by, you see, in this case, I put the label and then uh, during the formatting, I lost uh, my dates overlapping. So typically, you put labels for the relationship due duration, but if you forget it, it's, it's not, uh, it's clear what you know, what the meaning of the relationship from one direction. It's important that you have two arrows when it is bidirection. But anyway, in some case, the comments can be related to uh, where comments are usable, useful are typically in a relationship or um, in some groups. But again, you don't need to, to, to specify each single, um, to specify each single uh, uh, um, item in, in your schema. So this is uh, uh, this is the end for CIDM. We might go back at the end of the uh, of the lesson to this exercise, but I would like to move a step forward. Otherwise, um, we cannot conclude the lesson with all the content that I want to discuss. And the second, okay, okay, we stop for a second. Uh, what about cardinality in this museum model? The cardinality is missing, <laughs> and in the exercise. Uh, um, the exercise uh, uh, is ex it, you're asked to include them. So it's missing because I wanted to focus uh, on um, on 
uh, on the general concepts uh, and not to discuss the instances. So it's left to you as an exercise to add cardinality. Okay, so the next step is about LIDM. No, it's... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Pop. Here we are. LIDM. Uh, here the lecture is... I mean, LIDM is relatively simple as it has less primitives. We are here. LIDM is about content in the large, but having an eye about navigation. So you design LIDM thinking now thinking about uh, uh, how will people use it uh, more in a stronger way with respect to when you use CADM. So uh, that is a just rack up wrap up of um, of the previous slides, a repetition of previous slides in which we see how the different sub model fit in the design process. So it's a replication of the other slide. Uh, and uh, LIDM is, what is it about? It's basically content specification refinement. You are refining uh, the property of the content that, that you will have in your web application. Um, it's an intermediate step uh, in, an, in between uh, the content design and navigation design. So you start having in mind how the user will navigate the navigation without specifying how she will navigate. So you define the content, it's something about content, uh, but having in mind navigation. It's a concept of specification process and in the large process. And remember in the large, because the typical mistake that uh, you students do when you do design is, uh, is switching between level of abstraction, providing too many details uh, and omitting some important part and conceptual level. So remember in the large, in the large is a mantra. You are not working on the detail. You are remaining at a high level of abstraction. And by the way, the ability to presenting to to reason at the progressive level of abstraction and presenting things at the progressively decreasing level of abstraction is uh, something that you should learn uh, in general in, 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 your, in your career. I, I often see students also during the thesis or during the presentation of their project that continuously switch between high level uh, concept and the implementation details. Remember, people must be accompanied to through step by step towards uh, uh, from higher level concept to uh, lower level concept. Let, but, I mean, just opening a comment about uh, um, uh, students' capability of presenting things. Okay, so and they did the following. Sometimes we have we have topics. Uh, that are big, uh, big in the sense that uh, you have a lot of content about these uh, topics. For example, if you, you're talking about, a, you're describing a, a course in a university website, uh, in principle, you really have uh, many things to say, the syllabus, uh, the exams modalities, uh, <clears throat> the teaching material, the, uh, the uh, the reviews that, that uh, are given on the course. So they are big in sense they, are, they have articula multiple articulated contents. So the idea is uh, to organize uh, topics into parts, to split topic into parts. Each part, but that is an important point, each part must be a self contained. So something that is not split uh, uh, in an arbitrary way, but there is a self-contained unit. When I say the syllabus of a course, I mean the syllabus is 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 a is a subconcept. Right? It is is self-standing. It's clear what the syllabus is. It's clear what the bi bibliography for a course here. It's clear what an abstract for a course here. It's clear what a long description for a course here. So the idea is that slicing, 
taking a bit things and, and splitting into parts. Uh, these are and, and why do we want to split? Because then we have the building block to, to connect pages. Um, and that was the people do also in, in the editors of newspaper do. I mean, they take uh, when they compose their pages, uh, they have the different building block that they put together. It's not just a matter of layout. It's a matter of putting uh, multiple pieces together that in general should have should be self-standing, self-contained. You do not accept to have uh, pages, even that may happen. happen sometimes the first page of a newspaper, but that continues in, in, in other pages. But in general, newspaper pages are made of pieces, multiple articles that are self-contained. So you want to split big things into small things, but each small thing is not uh, an arbitrary piece uh, is obtained by us through, through a slicing process that has identified self-standing unit. And this is self-standing, <coughs> self-contained unit are the building block um, for creating pages. Um, also, uh, let me zoom here because apparently, okay. Sorry, it just uh, was not good. Okay, no should stay. Um, also, uh, you want to have uh, some information about uh, groups and relevant relationship. Basically, group and relevant relationship in CADM are described by saying, I group topics of this kind, uh, full stop or I group these things. Relevant relationship are described by saying, okay, I, can, I, I am a relation between this and this. We want to reflect in this LIDM phase, if there is, what is the specific, if there is any content associated to these structures. Um, uh, and so particularly for relevant relation, you want to, 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 to reflect about what to add to uh, to to the description of, of relevant relationship. Um, what IDM is not about, I'm saying it explicitly because very often in project, in your project, I found that some typical mistake. And the typical mistake is uh, defining a specific data structure of topics. So uh, IDM is not about uh, defining uh, the data, the detailed data. Uh, uh, in, uh, in, in topics and kind of topics. And by data, I mean uh, uh, precisely define items of information. For example, when I, I have, if for an, an, an event, um, if we have a kind of topic event, uh, you specify an event, but you don't need to specify that an event uh, like a table in a database, uh, have a date, an address, a time, a contact name, or similar. Just say an event has some practical information and a description, for example. You don't get into the detail of the data structure. The data structure are specification in the small. They are typically, they can be specified using uh, database models such as the ER. And in fact, uh, in your documentation, you will be asked to add a session in which you describe this data structure for your whole website. So you have to, you are invited, you are asked, not invited, you are asked, there will be a section in your documentation, which is the entity relationship model for the data structure needed to provide the content described in the IDM models. Is that uh, relatively clear? Or so remember, 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 you are working in the large and you are not required to, to write data structure in the small. I want to pinpoint it because it's a typical, typical mistake. Um, okay. Then these are the basic primitives. There is one name that you have to remember, dialogue act, okay? Put, uh, make a ping, mental ping in your mind uh, that uh, dialogue act uh, is, is the key concept. Uh, it's a key concept. Uh, this uh, term comes from uh, linguistic 
linguistic. The dialogue act, linguistic model a dialogue as uh, uh, an exchange in linguistic that's also now used also in conversational technology, in uh, conversational agents. So the dialogue act is uh, the mm, the package of information that is exchanged during a dialogue. So when I now I'm speaking, the dialogue act is uh, what is said between when I start speaking and I end speaking. So when I say, okay, a, a sort of pause is uh, when it uh, marks at the end of a, of a dialogue act. So the idea of dialogue, because remember here, here we have this conversational metaphor. So a, a dialogue act, the, the, there are the concepts are dialogue act and represented dialogue act. These are related to topics and kind of topics. And basically, dialogue acts represent the basic components of topic of a given kind. So when I speak about uh, a course, I typically start presenting the course, and this is a dialogue act. And then you may ask me, okay, tell me the detailed syllabus, and I, and that is, uh, and so I start with another dialogue act to describe the syllabus. Then you may ask me, uh, what is the teaching material that build bibliography, and I start telling teaching material by bibliography. So each, there are different moments, unless I'm very verbose person with Sometimes I am, but the system should not be a verbose person. I do not tell you everything in one shot. It will be too heavy. It will be too cumbersome. And you will probably miss the point. I, a good speaker, a good uh, conversational companion is able to condense uh, the, 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 the various aspects uh, and uh, organize conversation in different uh, pieces. Okay. So dialogue act is... Uh, uh, basically, that is the metaphor, is basically a component of topics. A representative dialogue act is uh, a dialogue act of, this, the, of the dialogue acts for the topic that is most relevant. It's the one that is really, the, 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 it, it's most relevant in the sense that uh, you should speak about that dialogue act, you should express that dialogue out before saying something else. Then the content about grouping is called introductory dialogue act, the content about relevant relationship called transition act. So dialogue act is something atomic and is a characteristic of a topic. Um, dialogue, so you, what you're basically doing is uh, taking a big things and, and creating slicing. So you're doing slicing a fragmentation task. So for example, painting, you get uh, this dialogue act, introduction, visual presentation through full screen image, big lo bi bibliography, provenance. And we see an example here. Look, you have, Okay, uh, I'm not saying that these dialogue acts uh, are in different pages. I'm just saying that these are the semantic component. Like in this case, painting, which by the way can become full page painting uh, if the connection. Uh, okay, we have uh, technical information. We have overview, we have provenance, exhibition history, technical summary, bibliography. Okay, so basically, the and if you go to other paintings uh, uh, of the same author or of other authors, so let's go to other works of art of Goya, you will see the you will see that uh, these uh, basic uh, structures is the same uh, on all painting. No, that's the one, <laughs> one that <laughs> we saw yesterday. It's the only one that, that do not have much, uh, much uh, information. But let's go to uh, 
two other highlights here, and you will see that the structure is basically the same. Okay, uh, here for example. Okay. Okay, similar structure, big picture. And then basic technical information, uh, overview, provenance, exhibition, history, bibliography. Here, since it's one of the masterpieces of National Gallery, also highlights essay, um, which is uh, additional content. So in summary, uh, Basically, the, the, the designer, the content designer for the website decided that uh, uh, to fragment topics uh, painting into these components. Uh, why do you want to make this slicing? As I mentioned, because then, like in this case, uh, you can uh, provide, uh, you can provide uh, a more regular structure you can guide uh, the authoring process of content. Uh, so said, okay, you, you have a, a, a guideline to create the content uh, and you can make, uh, you can organize regardless of, of the layout uh, that uh, of the, and the mechanism to present the various pieces. Like in this case, they all appear in the same page and then they've left this invariant. But basically you can uh, regulate uh, the content production process and the visual layout process, and then the implementation and uh, uh, creation of pages. Uh, some components, uh, dialogue arts can be mandatory or optional. Like in this case, uh, highlight essay could be a, an optional um, component. You remember before we had uh, in this um, uh, in this uh, painting here, I said, wow, hmm. I have a description, which was not in the other. Description means when, when there is a signature um, of uh, uh, in the painting. They don't have, a, they probably didn't have the time to write much description here. So they only put uh, inscription as uh, as component. Uh, inscription is not, is optional, is not in all painting. Here they don't have description, they have inscription. Um, so some, as in this case, and I invite you to navigate the National Gallery because it's, it's inspirational in terms of design. Uh, so there are some dialogue act mandatory, so normally the one that you put are the one that must be in all elements, or some of them you can mark them as optional. Uh, in general, you, you have one single piece, uh, which is the default, but you can also have multiple pieces, like uh, in, in this case, all these are single pieces. Uh, but if you say, if you want to add, for example, multiple images here, multiple full full screen images instead of one, uh, in this case, the dialogue up the large image. So imagine that you want to do some uh, um, uh, radiography of, of, of the painting, which is typical of restorations, then you will have a situation which you have multiple uh, dialogue act of type full image associated to the topic uh, um, painting. Uh, the rep represented dialogue act, the idea is the following. Uh, Typically, there is one element which is uh, uh, most more, um, more important than saying that it, uh, it's more representative. Okay, is the one that when you start conversation, you will start talking about that, making this dialogue act. Um, this dialogue act is called representative dialogue act, and it appears, it, it becomes underlined, like in this case. Okay, uh, museum. A museum has been split into practical info, where we are, history and contact. What is uh, the representative dialogue act? Well, we have decided as designer of this application that practical info 
are the the thing that the people would probably look for more. That is the the very essence. I mean, the, that is the most important aspect uh, that people would know about this. For painting, uh, in depth is an in depth description. Full screen image. Well, it could be full screen image or introduction. Notice that these uh, ballets are not pages yet. Are just saying that the semantic component of a painting, for example, are these three ones, and the semantic component, the pieces of museum, are these four ones. You, we will see when we do page design that you you can put some, you can put each piece in a single page, or you can put a combination of these pieces in the same page. So I can put together full screen image and introduction. Or I can put together introduction and then full screen image and in depth, which is that's nice, probably, but that, that's not the point. So you can make any combination of uh, dialogue acts in the page according to many design decisions, according to how much uh, content you really have uh, for each piece. So if introduction is three lines, uh, you would probably put it together with full screen image. So you have to. At this point, uh, as a separate documentation which does not appear in IDM, you have to make a precise agreement with your authors, with the one that deal with your content, and decide how much you want to have uh, for each uh, dialogue act. So introduction, you, uh, you said, okay, you have to write 10 lines no, or 200 words. And that is exactly what it happens also in creating a newspaper. I have uh, somehow studied the newspaper design uh, in the news, that we mean the everyday newspaper uh, process, uh, and they and they really give a very strict constraints, of course, on how many pages uh, they have to put uh, in the in in the um, uh, for each article and how articles are combined. So far. Online newspapers are long list of articles, not, not much structure, but the journalists, they have a specific indication when a, an article is posted also online to, to produce a, a specific maximum number of words. So giving content uh, uh, authoring uh, requirements and constraints allow you to also to, to then identify what you can combine in a single page. In museum, you can put practical info on where we are together. And the reason why we have separated these two items is that practical info is probably just textual. Where we are is uh, can have a, a picture uh, or beside the, um, a, 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 a text. History is probably um, uh, text and contacts is a list of, uh, of emails and, and phone numbers. Um, and then uh, apologize for the visualization. Sorry. Okay. I will show with this visualization that is. Okay. Uh, this is a various example of uh, fragmentation. Basically, museum has multiple fragment, but in our MOOC website, all of this, all this topic had not been any fragmentation at all. Okay, uh, no, sorry, no, that is not what I want to say. I want to say that you have a, there is a, um, a, a sort of a mismatch. Okay, there is a tension between uh, do I do single topics which are big and then I split, or do I start with uh, many single topics since uh, the beginning? So this is the first choice. I say I want to talk about the museum, and that is a single topic, and then you split. Or you can immediately understand that you want for the museum, you want to have practical info, history, where we are and contacts. And then uh, so you make this slicing at, con at CADM level and then you don't have much to do during LIDM. My recommend, I mean, both uh, processes, this one, large topic, then split in parts or clear idea of all the parts, so they become single topics and no splitting. Um, it's up to you. T 
Typically, the design process, the most frequent design process is this one. Large topics then are split. In that, because you don't have an idea, you know at the beginning that you have to talk about the museum and understanding what you want to say about the museum, which are the dialogue are typically appears later. But from a technical formal perspective, both uh, processes, this one and this one, is, uh, is these are both correct. Short. So just uh, uh, final. Uh, Another slide about um, topic and dialogue act. There are different fragmentation criteria. Fragmentation can be, I have a lot of content and let's try to split it into more readable, more usable. Or you have uh, something related to the nature of the content. I have uh, images, I have text, I have animation, I have uh, oh, sort of data like the like in in this case um, these are sort of you know these are sort of technical data uh, or you can split by user profile uh, which is a sophisticated design decision look at here you might have um, no that is not a good one okay you might have and that is what they what they do here okay um they have an introduction for the general public uh, who knows who is raphael and um, and a sort of a very um a relatively simple presentation and then they say i want to have something for a sort of essay for specialist which is this part. So in this case, not for all painting, because it would be a huge editorial effort. They have split in parts that are more appropriate for the general public and something which is more uh, for specialists. Even though also exhibition history, it's, some, it's certainly not for the general public. People is not typically interested in the exhibition inter, inter, um, uh, history of a piece. Of, of art okay so sorry okay so you can split because you want to have content for different user profile or okay for no for multiple media so my content about this was wrong for multiple media is the example that i have explained so i have a um, navigation audio and uh, uh, sorry animation image and text content nature is that uh, there are some parts that are intrinsic uh, in the nature of, of, of something, such as a course is obviously done, uh, course presentation is mandatorily done by a syllabus, by bibliography and how to do the exam. Okay, so these are the, the, the um, example of this, uh, of, of this possible way of split, uh, of defining dialogue act. So, for example, by side, you say, okay, the dialogue act is introduction and further details. You just say, oh, I make an abstract. It's, I have a lot of contents. Let's make an introduction and then uh, the rest is in further detail. By content natures, such as uh, 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 for a print, I can say, what is the subject? What is the technical information? What are the historical information? What are the comments? By user profile for expert and non-expert, by media, textual, plus small image description, plus full screen image, plus animated image. Okay, short break. Um, good, okay, the question is, is there always just one representative dialogue out per topic? Okay, that is a, um, a sophisticated question. In general, yes. You say this is uh, because you have in mind the average user. The average user go when they want to, to, to know something about the topic, that is the first thing that you should tell them. Okay, but um, uh, I answer in this question. But uh, you might have a situation in which uh, you, your, 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 web, uh, your user is uh, more expert or is more interested to images or also for accessibility reason he might 
uh, look for sound uh, uh, content, for example, or for visual content only. So, in general, there is one representative. Uh, in, you can uh, describe, but that is not an explicit primitive of the model. You can add uh, in, your, in your comments that uh, other dialogue acts are representative for different categories of users. But in that case, uh, you have to describe it textually. And if you want to enforce uh, this uh, behavior that every time the user asks something about a topic, um, you provide that representative content and, and, and the provision of this content depend on the user, so on something that uh, uh, you want to, you must know about the user, then you need the sophisticated uh, say, personalization mechanism, which are not simple to implement. So it's a very good question for sophisticated websites uh, that have some sort of personalization, this can be done is not explicit part of the primitive of LIDM, but you are not present, prevented to, um, may, to express this design decision as a comment, uh, and you will not be able, or probably not in the time frame of the project to implement it, but it could be a good observation. Each dialogue act will be a new page. That is something that we will discuss next week. So. It's up to you. When you go to page design, you have the building blocks. But like, you know, there are the blocks of a Lego. And you can decide if you, what you want to put together. So the most straightforward design decision in page design is that each dialogue app becomes a page. Um, and so, which in principle could uh, be automatically implemented. So you can have an, into, uh, um, uh, an, an automatic implementation from LIDM specification to the website if you follow a strategy in which each dialog act becomes a new page. In general, okay, the trend today, the style today, which I personally don't like, is to put oh, everything in a big long page. So in that case, you merge, you, you merge different dialog act. And that is the other extreme. You put, you have done the splitting, but then you put one, everything in one page. Um, that is a delicate point uh, that we will discuss. Uh, so, so good to raise this question. Keep, I keep the answer suspended in the sense that it deserves um, uh, uh, a, a sort a discussion that we will do in the next lectures. Okay. If there is no other question, I would continue. Um, there is no practical. Okay, in the previous example, there is no practical difference between the two approaches. Uh, and he is referring uh, to this to this to this picture. Okay. This is approach number one. Approach number one uh, approach number one is uh, I at the beginning. During content design, I know that that I will have to have content about the museum, and I decide that what this content is uh, only only when uh, in a further step. If uh, I can have clear ideas uh, since the very beginning, so I have to do no slicing. Both are, as I mentioned, both are technically correct. Both are equivalent because at the end, the building block of content that I have, uh, that uh, I'm losing the mouse, uh, that I have, that I have to uh, to deal with uh, are these spots, uh, the, the, uh, the these uh, uh, dialogue act. So the set of dialogue act is the same. Uh, it depends on. Um, on your development process, on your design process. Most frequent, uh, the most frequent design process is, is this one. You have general, a general indication of, of the need of including a description of the museum. And then this is a refinement that you understand in, uh, in a second step uh, of, the, uh, of, the of the development process during uh, re content requirements uh, analysis. So this is, uh, uh, the, the, the one on top uh, reflects better than 
the, the normal process. Uh, the second one, uh, in the second one, you anticipate some design decision, but it's okay. Maybe you are able to do so. So both of them are accepted. As uh, okay, um, as that current uh, single page design have to do with the fact that more and more the web navigation is uh, mm, done on mobile devices. Uh, that is a good point, and my opinion is yes. Uh, I I think that uh, in mobile devices it's easier to scroll than to jump from one page to another page. Um, the usability, the effect on usability of this long scrolling for people and for conveying meaning and for conveying good information uh, to to the user, for me is disruptive. The sense that people at the end uh, don't read, they just jump and pick a, a word here is there. But yes, I think that the phenomenon um, is uh, is due to this fact. Um, one could say, okay, I, I could have a version uh, on the mobile which is long, so I I, I download the page one uh, once, uh, and I have many pieces all together. While on the website, I can appreciate the the fact that I have uh, uh, focused content. Um, so I mean, I, I think it's nice to have this representation here. I mean, it's very pleasant. It gives me in the context, uh, and it gives me. Uh, and it gives me uh, other contents on demand instead of having. I show you an example: the National Gallery of London. Again, the National Gallery of London. They, they, they really temporary close. Of course, they have. Uh, um, they have. Uh, Okay, they have again highlights. Uh, okay. Okay, they have uh, chosen to to let me see to to have longer pages. Okay, uh, we will discuss the usability of this website. Um, They've decided to put a lot of content in in one single page uh, to like here uh, without somehow organizing things. Uh, um, so my point is the following. I think that in uh, in in a mobile in the mobile is important uh, probably the best solution to have longer <coughs> to have a, uh, to to download everything one. <coughs> once and to see um, everything by scrolling, but still the issue of having a dialogue act remains uh, as an important design solution because uh, at least uh, you have the different pieces. Uh, and you might have uh, links, uh, internal links to, to, to jump uh, between different pieces. While when you have the possibility of working on a larger screen, uh, having uh, focused content is more usable, is more is less tiring for you to read uh, and is less tiring for you to interact with. OK. Uh, OK, then is, this is the notation. So the notation is um, is, is simple in LIDM. Uh, basically, you keep the basic element. Uh, you, you add a few few items. Um, And jump. I was skipping one one uh, one page. Um, introductory dialogue act. It's it's a dialogue act, so it's a unique uh, unit. Uh, it's a unit of of dialogue, something uh, be, which has a self standing meaning. Uh, it's the content about the group. So when you say uh, when you decide that the group is a set, uh, it's okay. A set is defined by its members. But in many cases, uh, you want to uh, you have content about the group. So a group is not just a container, as in CIDM, is a container uh, with some content. And the content uh, is about what is uh, could be a description of the entire group. 
and uh, and or can be a description of each member of the group. So the design decision here is how each member of the group is um, uh, is uh, uh, is presented, and this is from our website. In this case, uh, we are in research. Uh, research is a group of multiple research areas. Okay, so it's the group of the research areas areas of our polytechnic or our department. Um, what is the dialogue act here? Well, this dialogue act is uh, uh, is the content to introduce the group. The member of the group are the single research area: system control, bioengineering, genetic engineering, electronic computer engineering, telecommunication. Okay. But not just a list of the pieces. These in turn are research area. There is a, a short comment, an introductory comment, and there is an image. So they have decided to put some comment about the group, not about the specific items. This is uh, this content, uh, which is uh, uh, what are the items, what is the what uh, what is the content associated to each item which in this case is just a name name of this research area name of this research area plus uh, a short introduction plus uh, some text uh, uh, some images okay so this is uh, what you see here is a dialogue act about the group uh, research areas of department of electronics formation bioengineering okay it has been mounted together, packed together with other information in the page, but that is a clear self-standing conceptual unit that has been mounted on top of the page. Okay, so that is introductory dialogue after content about a group. Uh, the notation uh, from a graphical perspective uh, is a piece which has been missing. Because there is a slide which has been removed by mistake, uh, which is uh, the one referring uh, to Transition Act. Okay, I, I speak it uh, in voice, uh, by voice, and then I will uh, include the, the slide that has been removed by mistake. Transition Act is, uh, um, is content associated to re relevant relationship. And uh, there are examples here. OK. Um, let me find. OK, like in, OK. Look at uh, this is, uh, this um, example in um, in the National Gallery of Washington. Okay, we are in Painter. In Painter, Raphael, we ask for what are the works of art. Okay, in this case, uh, this this uh, we we are. We are looking at a, a relationship between a painter and a work of art, uh, and, and his works of art. So in this case, the, the this uh, um, transition, this is a transition act, which is very sophisticated here because we have uh, um, we have many works of art related to Raffaello uh, here in. Uh, in in the National Gallery of Washington, they have because they con they con also consider their prints and so on. So they have uh, the results is uh, 150. So they have defined. They say that you, you can organize them by title. By there is a default classification. There are chronological representation. Uh, but this is the transition act. Is 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 a, a moment in which you describe their relationship, and then. From each of these, uh, you can uh, okay. These are these are not Raffaello, but um, follower must uh, Raffaello. Then you can go to the specific item. Oh no! In this case, uh, it was probably just this thumbnail. 
Um, anyway, so the idea is that you are you are creating a structure uh, in which uh, you describe uh, the relationship, uh, not in terms of uh, some minimum uh, anticipation of what the uh, related elements are. Uh, like here. Okay, it's poses on. And they have decided that, that uh, they have put the links to poses on to the, his work here. But they also they have decided take a decision of how to introduce uh, this relationship. So these are the, the relationship painting by this artist. They have defined decided uh, to represent them with a title with a repetition uh, of the author name and with a picture. OK. Um, and that is related to transition act. OK, the content related to the semantic relationship. Um, and so this is the notation. And this is the notation. Uh, the notation, yeah, we have already seen the notation for dialogue act inside a topic. This is the notation for uh, introductory act. So basically, you're, you're just saying that there is a list of content and there is a short uh, introduction. So that's a notation in the final diagram. And this is uh, uh, the notation for transition act. Okay. Uh, uh, and this is how a CIDM schema is transformed uh, into an LIDM schema. Basically, as you can see from this picture, it's a sort of refinement in which the main elements are the slices inside topics. We do not add much semantics here in the notation uh, for Trans this is a transition act. These are all introductory act. So, and the reason why we, we cannot add anything more than this uh, into introductory act, act or transition act is that uh, it's for readability purpose. We will not be able to, um, to, to, to add more elements here. It, it's complex enough. So the description of what is in the introductory acts and what is in the transitional act is done separately in a short textual description. OK, so as a, an example, you can autonomously analyze uh, this uh, website, the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, we will do it as an exercise uh, maybe next time. I would like to answer the, another question and then move. Uh, okay. Thank you. And then move to intro to the last step, which is PIDM. So you get a, a sort of anticipation of what uh, we will uh, we will see next next week. Again, the same picture. We are now we are finished with the modeling content. LADM has been the, um, the schema provides a refinement, having in mind possible way to navigate. And here we use PADM to model more in a finer grained way uh, navigation general in the large navigation capabilities of our web application and uh, some presentation feature related to pages. So we introduce finally the concept of page. Basically, we start from LIDM specification. So our input is uh, something like, it's not this, uh, but it's this. OK, we start from here. That is our starting point. You know, many things are missing here. We don't really know. We don't have the home. Uh, we don't know what are the pages. We don't know what happened when we traverse a relationship. We only know that we have to describe these topics. Uh, this, uh, we have to describe uh, these related elements. We have to describe uh, our, to introduce uh, our, our groups. But we, we haven't taken any, we don't know, as, as, as you've mentioned before, how, when, when I am in a museum, how can I reach the other pieces? Or when I am in a technique, how can I 
go back go and see something about the museum or about the credits about the contents and so on so we know a lot of things about the content here but we do not know we haven't taken any decision yet about navigation and this decision about packaging into pages and navigation is taken in uh, PIDM design. So we start from LIDM specification and we define in the large at conceptual level again the complete navigation architecture. And the main, so the, the overall architecture will be clear in this phase. And uh, is I call it navigation architecture instead of information architecture. Because uh, for, for us uh, who have done all this C and LIDM design process, the information architecture is there. The complete specification of our content is there in the large. We're not getting to the detail of uh, if we want to have a date formatted in a given way or a title. It's information architecture is in the large is here. This is uh, our information architecture in the large. OK, now here we provide the navigation architecture. So we superimpose, we superimpose um, a navigation structure into this information architecture, defining the main structure and navigation elements within a page and across pages. So again, content design in the small is not part of page design. So and visual layout design. So we talk about page here, but we're not mm, designing the specific detail of how this content, the, what are the, the content, the data structure. It's not part, it's something that you model through the entity relationship model. And in, in, a, in, 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 in a moment in which you are closer to implementation, also detailed visual layout design. So the detailed graphics and look and feel is not part of page design as is intended in our model. That should be clear. So the, the, I want just to, uh, as a sort of a, a prerequisite to understand the um, PIDM and presentation design, I wanted to, to discuss with you what is, uh, in, what do you find in most pages? What are the key ingredients in most pages? And the key ingredients are content, links, uh, and other interactive elements and uh, what we call orientation info. And now look at here. Okay. In this page, which we can see also, we can also see um, directly. If we, okay, I just take a walk. Mm. Okay, just let me take uh, OK. OK. Uh, look at this page, or also look at this page. We certainly have content. We have various links. We have links here, which then we have to close. We have links here, Impressionist. And we have, of course, links to the painting. Similar here, we have, uh, oh, here, we, the, the, the navigation structure is richer. You can also go to floors, uh, you can go to specific collection, you, you can go to parts, okay? So surely there are contents and links. And in this case, which is, uh, in my opinion, the best design uh, uh, designed museum website. You also have orientation info. These are this one. Orientation info tells you what they tell you where you are in where you are at two levels. You are in Bindo Alto Viti, which is the title of this uh, painting, which somehow is redundant. It's very clearly, but it's interesting that. Uh, also, if you if you change it, uh, it remains. OK, so you are in these specific topics uh, which belongs uh, to collection. Uh, there are two comments to do on this orientation. We will go back. Uh, what uh, does uh, 
this uh, that I call info orientation info. So something that helped the user to understand, to orient uh, his navigation, to understand where he is and how he has got there. OK, uh, can you give me example of uh, orientation info in uh, how you I mean you often have orientation info in different websites, but you call it in using different names. Uh, OK, can you repeat it? Uh, what are transition acts in one second? Let me ask the question about uh, examples of orientation info. OK, the breadcrumbs. OK, and the side map. Good question. Good answer. Um, indeed, uh, it's true. Uh, uh, these are a sort of breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are little teeny pieces of information that tells you uh, the path that you traversed. Um, these are the, the, um, these are sort of breadcrumbs. OK, uh, designing uh, so Breadcrumbs are example of information info. Uh, breadcrumbs are pieces of um, are indication of uh, steps of pages that you have traversed. Uh, we call it orientation info because we think that uh, uh, you could uh, is is more than just uh, leaving a bread uh, a piece of bread when you on an element that you cross. You can add a more um, a richer content about uh, navigation your navigation history. So it's more than a navigation history, in other words. But I want to draw your attention on this example, which is in which the orientation info is uh, similar to breadcrumbs. Uh, I would like to know to 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 pinpoint that there is a, a redundancy here and a typical mistake that you studying students do because you are inspired to bad example in many websites. It's there is a home. OK, there are two points. First of all, it, it's not really my path. I was, if you remember, I was coming from Raphael. I was not coming from collection. Uh, OK, at least at the beginning, I was coming from collection. But if we go to artists here. Um, OK, no, no. OK, anyway. Of course, in a sense, I was coming from collection because collection, the only way place where I can go to select pieces uh, of art uh, or through the name of the work of art or through the artist. So, but that, okay, but it makes sense. Uh, Aldo Baldoviti is, uh, is uh, an element in the collection, but for sure, home is totally not relevant. The fact that I put home when I have the button home here does not mean, I mean, does not uh, give me any extra information nor any extra facility for navigation. So in this case, from an orientation viewpoint, uh, collection uh, Bindal Dodoviti is the only part that I'm interested to. I'm not interested to, to have home because home I have here. In addition, this web, this uh, um, orientation info is not particularly expressive because, uh, okay, it's expressive because it tells me that I'm coming from a collection. Uh, it would be nice to have other things such as uh, Aldo, Aldo Vitti by Raphael, even though it is um, very evident here. Uh, so I'm just saying that in, in this uh, in orientation info, the, rel the truly relevant things is collection, because if I click on build of Aldo, Aldo Vitti, I'm still here. OK, if I click on collection, that is useful because I can return immediately to collection, even though uh, I could go from here. So I just wanted to raise your attention that designing uh, orientation info is uh, is an interesting, is a challenging design issue. Uh, is a challenging design issue, and um, and uh, just say okay, I put some breadcrumbs, I put uh, some navigable, uh, clickable items uh, of. Um, of uh, information where the user that highlight where the user has gone uh, is not not necessarily useful. Anyway, to the issue that uh, 
each web page is made. And so I'm anticipating orientation info because it's really something that you forget to include in your website. It's really important. Um, we will repeat and repeat again that is uh, uh, um, fundamental. It is recommended because in many, in some web pages, you cannot find it while well, I think it's essential. Anyway, for sure there are content and links, like in this case. All these are links, links to the author, these are content, these are content, these are links, and these are orientation info. Okay, so these are the primitives uh, of a uh, page IDM, the concept of page, and there are various categories of pages. And finally, oh, finally we find the home. Never mentioned the home so far, here we introduce the home page. There are four categories of links, there is orientation, the concept of orientation info, and the concept of navigation patterns. Uh, I'm not going to, to get through these primitives. We will go back next week. Uh, uh, you will find the rest of the slides on Bib anyway. Uh, I would like to return to, to the two questions that I've uh, received on the chat. Uh, um, can you repeat what are transition acts? Okay. Okay, no, no, let me answer to this question why collection is not redundant either. I think I've already replied, I told you, collection. Well, it's redundant in the sense that uh, um, you are in the collection. Uh, if you had gone, for example, to exhibition, okay, look, here you are in exhibition. So give you the feeling in which section you are, or you are in conservation. So it just, you know, give you the feeling that you are in conservation, you are in exhibition, you are in, um, in, in the area of research. So it's, uh, if you, in a complex website, so home is certainly redundant, and I find that the, having the idea on, of which session you are is, is useful. Of course, you could have a, had other solution. I find this elegant and non-intrusive. Uh, you could have uh, had just, you know, just highlighted, say you are in, uh, research. So if you had highlighted this, uh, it's another way to keep the user oriented. So not necessarily you have to put words here. You can also use a visual element to highlight where you are. Okay, so in this case, <coughs> it is nice, uh, useful, not strictly necessary for usability because this is a very well-structured, organized website. But remember when you, I mean, for example, you make a transaction, and you want to, or you're buying a ticket, you want to know where you are in the, in the, in the process uh, and what you are buying. Very, for example, uh, very often in some, some travel agents, uh, some um, airlines, uh, you, you take a ticket, uh, um, you have uh, a date, uh, you have a fee. When you are in the moment of paying, uh, the orientation info would be you are buying this ticket on this date uh, for this amount. Uh, I don't know if it ever happened to you. It happened to me that I was, you know, just you know, clicking the wrong date or, or, or try to make the reservation several times. At the end, since this orientation info about what product I was to buy um, was not evident at the end of uh, when I really said, OK, I want to pay, I bought a ticket for the wrong date. OK, so just keep the user oriented about where he is, what he is doing. Concerning, uh, concerning uh, um, transition act. OK, transition act are the moments. OK, it's, it's a moment in the dialogue. It's what I say when I speak about a relationship. OK, in this case, um, let me go here. Uh, one second. Okay, let's take one dog. Okay, here. That one, okay. Okay, this is, okay, this is related content. Okay, these are semantic relationship. So they say the ready content is you can visit, uh, I'm, it's it's a broad relationship with anything that could have sense for this painting. 
for example, audios, other audios. In this case, are all audios and video contents. There are uh, also um, educational content uh, and uh, and lessons about Bagog and online lessons uh, and so on and so forth. So these are they have defined uh, a, a very generic semant relevant relation, which is called related content. We'll say, OK, it's related to everything that could be relevant for this painting. OK, this uh, what you see here. OK, this. Uh, this is all uh, a transition act because uh, it, it's what they say when I, I, you ask me, tell me more related content and I tell you, OK, my related content uh, is made of many elements, exactly 14. You can either visit uh, some kids' activities, or you can listen to a number of audios, or you can watch to a vid to two videos, or you can look at some educational activities, or you can look to so on and so forth. So the transition act is when I speak about the relationship without getting into the detail of the related element. So in a more simple in a in a in a more simple way, uh, okay, I can I, I can um, when I but by the way, in this website it, okay no no that is more evident in Cezanne okay when I say okay what are the painting of Cezanne I'm I'm asking a question so I'm invoking a semantic relationship and this is the dialogue act all these things here. Painting by Cezanne, these are our dialogue up. So I answer you by saying, OK, the painting by Cezanne that we have in our museum are an old woman with a rosary, Avenue uh, Chantilly, uh, the bathers. OK, I'm telling you, I answer you by listing the items. I'm not telling you anything specific or very few, which is specific of a specific item. In order to, to learn more about that item, I need to navigate to the topic. OK, by the way, here in this um, in this uh, museum, uh, they have decided to have a, a semantic relation, which is uh, uh, be between a painting and the other paintings by the same author. So they have a, re a semantic relation between a, note, a painting and other paintings of the same author. So they would have uh, um, an arrow from painting to painting. To denote uh, painting of the same author, and in this case, uh, here is the transition act for more painting by the same author. Okay, hope that is clear. Can traditional act uh, be associated to content previews? Yes, that was we are doing here. This is the content preview. The content preview is uh, a picture, a thumbnail, a title, and. Uh, for me, redundant, uh, uh, the author. It's redundant in terms of content, uh, but allow you to click and go to the design and then information if it is on display or not. And if it is on display, uh, they have a link to the specific room where these um, are, uh, where this uh, exhibit is exhibited. Okay. Other questions? If not, I will stop the recording and um, say you hello, have a nice weekend and see you next um, next week.